Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little for WeeklyPokerHand.com. I'm here with the 26th week, and today we have a hand where we're going to be playing a fairly short stack with Pocket Kings. And right here, whenever an early position player raises, I really like re-raising with your monster hands, because if your opponent does happen to have something that's good, they're probably just going to go all in with it. And since someone is opening from early position, their range is going to be very tight for the most part. Um, if we bring up Poker Stove here, if I had to estimate, I would say an under-the-gun range in general from like a 40 big blind stack is going to be something like this. Maybe like this, and I think this is going to be pretty loose. So, if he's only raising these hands, he's probably going to be going all in with something like this. So, if he's raising 6% of hands, and he's going to go all in with 4% of those, with 4% with, uh, of hands, that means he's not going to fold about... Um, 66% of the time, and I think he'll probably just go all in with a lot of these. Some players will call. Some players will call with the whole under-the-gun opening range. Obviously, he's not under the gun. He's in second position, but it's close enough. Um, but right here, this is a spot where I really love re-raising with kings and not slow playing, because if you do slow play, a lot of players behind you are going to call and take a flop, because a lot of people realize they should not be re-raising early position raisers unless they have a premium hand. So what's going to happen is you're going to end up taking this flop multi-way, and that's not really what you want when you have pocket kings when it's fairly likely you, can, likely you can just get it all in. So I like a re-raise here. I make it 2400 as you can see the, my cards are in the way. I think 2400 is a good number. It'll induce my opponent to shove a decent amount of the time and I'm not necessarily committed. Um, you know, I could still fold if I was bluffing, which I'm virtually never going to do. Uh, so he, he decides to just call, and when he just calls, I don't really know if that narrows his range much. Um, I don't really think it I don't think it changes anything. Here he donks out 3,600, and at this point, I think it's pretty much impossible for him to fold. And if he does fold, unless he has something like queen-jack offsuit, I don't really mind him folding. Like, if he has ace-queen here, and I shove and he folds, it's not really that bad of a deal for me, because he's still going to have some equity. So, I do go all in. And I, I think right here, calling would be a pretty big mistake, because if you call, it may tip him off to the fact that you have a monster, and... If he has something like ace queen, say, and you decide to just call, he may just give up on the on the turn. Or say he has something like pocket tens and decides to donk it. Um, this is called a donk bet whenever someone leads into the preflop raiser or re-raiser. If he has something like pocket tens and the turns, maybe like a king or a queen or an ace, he may just decide to check fold there, which of course would be a little bit silly, but you don't want to let your opponents off the hook. And I, I don't think anyone's really going to be folding very much of their range here whenever they bet. And whenever, whenever this guy does bet, I think his range is going to be pretty squarely hands like nines, tens, jacks, queens, kings, and aces. So I do shove, and he calls. And he actually has jack seven of spades, so I'm pretty shocked at that. Um, <laughs> you know, most players are not raising under the gun with jack seven of spades, and they're certainly not calling a three bet. But that's exactly what he did, and he ended up getting it in really bad. And somehow I hold, so that's very nice. But, um, yeah, I think where a lot of players go wrong in this hand is they try to figure out a way to slow play it, either pre-flop or post-flop. I guess, you know, in theory, if, if this player was competent, he would have just folded to my re-raise pre-flop and the hand would have been over. But, in general, players are going to have a strong range whenever they do raise in early position. So, that's going to be that for this episode. If uh, you guys want to check out how I think my opponent should have played his hand, I will be discussing that in part two of this 26th week of WeeklyPokerHand.com. And um, you can definitely check that out. This has been Jonathan Little. Thanks for watching.